Hey folks, Tony Lockhart here. This video is going to show you how to animate with Storyboard Pro. Now, please note, this is a storyboarding software. However, I really like to teach beginning animators how to do this first because it's so easy to kind of drag some of these keyframes and to get an understanding of timing. So, if you're beginning this process, you're learning how to storyboard and animate, I think this video is for you. Before we start animating, I'd like to go and change a couple preferences. Please note that I'm using Storyboard Pro 20 on a Mac. This stuff works the same way if you had 22 and you were using a PC. Okay, so on a PC, you would go Edit Menu to Preferences, but since I'm on a Mac, Storyboard Pro, let's go to Preferences. And then I just wanna go to the Project Settings. When I go here, I'm gonna change the default panel and clip length Let's change that from one second. I'm gonna bump that down to four individual frames of animation. Okay, let's go to the second column. I'm gonna press the down button. And you can see that I have zero seconds, zero minutes, zero hours, and four frames. Let's make sure you click that OK button in the bottom right. And we're all set. Now, since I'm gonna be doing animation, I don't really wanna use this thumbnail menu so I'm gonna go right here to the right and I want to go and turn on my timeline because the timeline works out perfectly um, for this please note that you could zoom in and out of the timeline and if you go and click on an actual scene or a frame you press P for panel and then you can get a bunch of these additional panels remember every one of them is gonna be four frames as a default as you click um, I think you should note the overall time. So this will tell you the time in the actual film and it gives you some other information such as the scene and the panel. You can go over here in your panels menu. You could see which scene you're on and you could see that your duration of time is four, uh, four frames, okay? And it's denoted right there. Um, also, I don't know if you realized it, but I stretched this one panel out in the beginning. Notice that when you go and stretch it out, the overall time and duration is going to change. So now it's 6 seconds, 144 frames. But as I just go over here and I click, 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 it's going to change that amount of time. I could also go and click over here and type in 4 seconds, and then it will shrink it down to whatever I have um, listed over here. Okay, so that's the first thing you got to do for setup. Okay, so before we start animating, um, what I'd like to do is to go over to the Tool Properties menu, just so I have access to brush size and different colors. And what I also want to do is to set up some kind of a background. So I'm going to go to the background layer. Let me go and create some kind of a layout chart. And I'll use these little hash marks or little tick marks to be able to figure out what my spacing is going to be for my drawings. I really like doing this because now that I have a four frame panel, what I can do is just go and duplicate this panel as many times as I need to. And I'll just shift click all of the new ones that I create. So I essentially double and double and double the number of panels that I need for my animation. All right, so now that I got a bunch of these drawings on four frames each, what I can do is go back to the stage view and I can go and choose a different color and I can actually start animating. I find that this is really helpful to duplicate your backgrounds ahead of time. So that way, if you're gonna go and start to animate something over here, so here, let me get a bigger brush. But you go and start to animate something there, then you can go to the actual next panel and the next. By the way, if you press the letter F to go forward, or A to go backwards, it's gonna help you go back and forth in between um, your actual uh, frames of animation. Okay, so I'm just gonna go forward and then you're gonna see like this is all it takes to animate. Okay, and then if I want to, I could just duplicate this on the last frame. I can also copy this selected layer and over here, I can just go and paste the layer 
paste the layer and then what it's going to do is it's going to hold it for me okay so let's go watch that and we've got movement we've got animation all right so in the previous segment of this video we talked about actually hand drawing and duplicating a bunch of these frames let's go ahead and delete those i'm going to get a brand new vector layer and by the way while i'm on it i very rarely use a bitmap layer because the vector layers allow me to to draw and I can animate on them and I could select things and I could scale and rotate and do whatever I need to do to the actual artwork. I rarely use the pencil, um, pretty much use the brush tool and I also use the vector layers tools because I think they're really handy. Okay, so here's a different way to go about animating. You can go in the timeline and I'm gonna stretch out this this clip that I've got so if you look at the actual timing it's about one second now so if I can go to two seconds and 12 frames two and a half seconds because 24 frames is one second you can kind of get an idea of how much time I have so what I can do next is on layer a I can go and I could draw something right so let me get my brush and get some blue paint and I'm gonna draw something so one way to do animation instead of drawing it every single time is you can use the transformation tool. So I'm going to click on layer transform. You can see that, okay, I've got my layer. It's selected. And what I want to do is to recenter. So I'm going to grab this pivot point, put it somewhere that's handy, probably here at the bottom. And then now what I can do is start and add a keyframe by hitting the plus sign. If I go to the end of the animation, which is a different time, now I can go and change the spacing. And you can see all of those little marks that are showing up on that orange line. That gives you an idea of how many spaces and locations in between. So if I press the letter A and I just go backwards frame by frame, actually I can't do that because I only have one frame. So if I scrub back and forth, you can see based on this two second slash, uh, what is it, uh, 12 frame um, clip, you can see how many intervals this thing is gonna be at. So one of the things I can do is at this point in time, closer to the end, I can go and change the location of this guy. And I could put some kind of a keyframe in there. Or if I wanted to, I can go and move this up here. So it's really handy because as you go and animate like this, and you're allowing the computer to do what you need to do, and, and the computer spaces it out, you lose a little bit of control, but you save a lot of time and effort because it puts stuff where you want it to be. All right, so let's go ahead and end this video and let's combine some of those techniques. So not sure if you can see, but the big layer with the red guy has some motion tween animation already on it. And what I'm doing right now in this part of the clip is I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of fix a little bit of the squash and stretch. And I'm thinking about doing some secondary action as well. So now that the red guy has been animated, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that and put it on another layer. And that other layer is gonna allow me to go and do some frame by frame animation. So you can see I'm kind of figuring out where this guy hits the actual ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and take that blue cone and I'm gonna record two points or two keyframes. And then in the middle, I'm just gonna lift it in the air and kind of rotate it, let the computer do the rest. So now that the motion tween animation's done, you can see at the bottom of the screen, now I'm going in and I'm duplicating layers and I'm erasing and kind of getting this thing to melt out of shape. So that's a really handy technique as well. I'm also gonna use the onion skin so when I duplicate these layers three or four times, and don't forget at the beginning of the video, we put these on four frame holds. Um, now I can go in four frames at a time and just kind of draw this cone and have it melt. 
Now I'm going to end by putting a longer hold so you can see that that frame is stretched out. And I can also go in and shorten some of these other frames as well. So here's your challenge. If you're new to animation, go give this a shot. Take Storyboard Pro, modify it so you can animate with it, and really try to understand timing and pacing. And let's see if you can make those principles of animation come to life. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.